Hi guys, Jack here. Today we're going to be doing another tier list video, this time for all the destroyers in MK48.io, which is a really fun ship fighting game online. Uh, in real life, a destroyer is designated as a fast, maneuverable warship intended to escort larger vessels and defend them against a wide range of threats. So it's kind of like a jack of all trades. It sometimes has missiles, torpedoes, guns. It's just good at dealing with everything, which in a game like MK48 is great. The first ship that's classified as a destroyer is a tier two Momi. I think it has a very awkward gun layout and you often have to kind of swing the ship all the way around to get shots on enemies. Sometimes shots go wide of this as well because you don't realize you've switched to like a different gun position. So it's a little annoying. The torpedoes are okay. They're not really enough to blow up enemies. I find they're kind of more of a nuisance unless you get lucky or you're really good. You have all right speed and good HP. And I think overall I'd give it a B minus. The only reason this is in B is because it's the first ship that has medium ranges, three guns. So that gives it a bonus because you can take out ships at longer range. If you play it well, you can take out the other tier two ships pretty easily. And sometimes a tier three if you get lucky, but at the same time, you're kind of an easy target. It's all right for hunting tier ones just because you've long range. Next up is the tier three, the Freshia. It's gun layout is a bit better. You have to be broadside to, uh, to hit all the shots, but at least you can, unlike the Momi where you kind of need to like almost zigzag around to get your guns where you want them to. Uh, the Freccia is okay at range. It's also okay up close because you have a lot of torpedoes. You lose a bit of speed, but you do gain a bit more health, which is helpful when you want to go up close. The, the slight increase in health and guns and torpedoes and stuff means it goes into just B tier. It's a good choice if there's subs around and you have to deal with them, or if you want the maneuverability to deal with some lower tier ships. Against a single target, the uh, tier 3 OSHA would be better if you can kill it in one hit because you can just launch all the ba uh, all the missiles. Or the Espana, the battleship, would be good if you don't need the nobility and there's no subs around. So you, you can choose the Freccia, but there's also other really good ships to choose. Next up, tier 4, the Fletcher. This is the uh, same story as the last tier ship. But again, the gun layout improves, there's more torpedoes, and at this point you have 10 torpedoes, which is actually like a menacing amount. You can fill up a cho choke point and annoy any other ship and blow them up, and you're, you're a bit of a threat to submarines as well. You can travel at 36 knots, and you have a decent amount of HP on par with the Freccia. And for these reasons, I give it B tier. You can choose it for the same reasons as last tier if you need a jack of all trades and there's lots of different enemies around. Next up is the tier five, Arleigh Burke. This is an absolutely goaded ship. Balance of size, speed, HP, and firepower. You have enough health to deal with an equal opponent head on, no problem, or a swarm of like lower tier noobs. You have enough firepower to whittle down an equal opponent, although you may need to land a torpedo too as well, and then like wiggle around because your torpedoes fire off uh, half on one side and half on the other. Against lower tiers, the weapon variety makes it a piece of cake to deal with the mob because you can launch torpedoes to kind of confuse them and then use your guns and missiles to kill them. Because of all this, it gets an A ranking. You can choose it when you need to get shit done. I'd only choose the cruiser in tier 5 if I need to get into like a big gun shoot off and I need the health or the sub if, you know, you just want to be a submarine person. Next up, tier 6, the Kolkata. This is an interesting ship. It's large, sluggish, it has okay firepower, but it's not great. And I find it just feels like a really large target. Even though it's only a little bit bigger and slower than the Arleigh Burke, it feels like a big deal. It, it makes a critical difference. It has the same surface to air missiles as the tier five, but at tier six and with less maneuverability and not very much more health, I feel like it's quite a bit weaker and it's not what you need. The torpedoes are too slow and I think they're kind of bad to be honest. Subs aren't scared of them. The missiles are all right. And at this point, one cannon just in the front of the ship, I don't think accomplishes much. Because of this, it gets a C ranking. Honestly, I'm not sure that I'd ever choose this. I might have been too harsh on the Freedom Missile Cruiser in the last video, as I think it's actually a better rounded ship. But at tier 6, I often choose the aircraft carrier, unless I'm really in the thick of it and need something that can shoot guns and have more health. Up next, tier 7, Type 55. Still large and sluggish like the Kolkata, but it actually has good firepower and a bit more flexibility. You have a lot of torpedoes, so you can be a threat again to submarines, and you can make it difficult for other ships to navigate. The missiles are actually good, and you have enough surface-to-air missiles to defend the ship and make the HP pool go a little bit farther. 
The helicopter is a nice touch as well. It gets a solid B ranking. It's a good choice for any situation. And here we go, tier 8, the last destroyer, the Zumwalt. It has the same issue as the last two, the tier 6 and tier 7, but the speed is more comparable to ships in tier 8, 28 to 35 knots, so that's okay. The best part about this ship is the LR LAP gun. It is amazing. It has really good damage, really good reload, and it goes so far so fast. You can abuse this gun with just a few missiles and you can shred anything that's a tier below you. Add in some rocket torpedoes in the heli and you can easily take on any tier ship that's the same as you. You, um, you have enough SAMs to deal with aircraft carriers and defend, although in a prolonged firefight, I find you'll run out just because the surface air missiles have a lengthy reload, unless you're always picking up oil crates to reload that. Because the torpedoes are rocket, you're a bit weaker against subs. It can be a bit harder to aim them, and especially if they're up close. But if you can keep a healthy distance, it's really good and you're strong. A ranking. This ship is always a solid choice if you don't want to take the cure of. Sometimes the Montana battleship can be good if there's no subs, but overall, I think the Zumwalt's the choice to go. If you look at all the ships, tier 2 to tier 8, and kind of average it all out, I think destroyers are a bit better than the missiles in last video, and they get a B-plus ranking. They're not so much of a one-trick pony as the missile ships, which is, of course, what you want with a destroyer, which is kind of designated as a jack-of-all-trades. You can handle an up-close firefight if you have to because you have more HP, but you're also really good from afar. You can deal with submarines because of your torpedoes, and you can sometimes launch missiles, and then you can also deal with missiles because you have surface-to-air missiles. You have a good balance between being fast and having firepower. I find you can be kind of weak if a sub targets you from afar and has guided uh, torpedoes because you can't really do anything, and then sometimes you can't outrun them, and that can be a bit annoying but you have to get lucky and blow them, blow them up with your torpedoes or maybe get around an island and lose them or something. But if you can keep your distance and use your torpedoes, it's good. A battleship will also really mess you up if they unload all your guns on you, but again, with good game sense, you can avoid this. I definitely recommend playing them. Fun ships.